Well, I read a statistic. I mean, in the 90s, there was a statistic that said 80% of the English conversations that happen each day happen between two non-native speakers. Because uh, the reality is you've got Chinese kids learning English, uh, not necessarily to talk to English native speakers, but they're going to do business with Japan or Korea or Zimbabwe. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I, I agree with that. And then the other question is, if we're teaching uh, cultural English, which, which culture? I mean, clearly it should be American. English used to belong to America and Britain, but today it belongs to the world, and they've all invented their own version of it. Chinglish. It ain't English, and it ain't Chinese. It's well, well, Chinglish. A Chinglish is when we take Chinese thoughts and we plug English words into them. So this is one of the most common errors you'll see. There have many people want to go to Beijing. It's because in Chinese the verb is yo, which means they have yo hun duo ren yao chu Beijing. And yo remains the same whether it's uh, singular, plural, whatever. No change. There have a car accident is occurred in the forest. There have a car accident is occurred in the forest. The, the, the Chinese verb to be is not used so frequently as it is in English. And in fact, one of, one of the many reasons, though, is because Chinese doesn't have adjectives. They have stative verbs. Example, in Chinese, I would say, he's very tall. Ta hen gao. We don't use the verb to be. We just use the adjective tall because it's not really an adjective. It's a stative verb. And tall doesn't change no matter how many subjects we have. For example, they are very tall. Ta men hen gao. Chinese, what you are saying is, he is being tall. Or, the book is being read. Or, the car is being old. So they don't need to use the verb to be because it's already included in the stative verb. So when they start learning English, then they, they learn about the word is, and then suddenly they start using it everywhere where it doesn't belong. And one of the interesting phenomenon that I see with the students, they often just will not let verbs be verbs. Uh, the accident is occurred. Well, occurred is a perfectly good verb. I mean, you could just use that by itself, right? The accident occurred in the forest. I, I, I don't know exactly why this is, but they suddenly just start putting is everywhere or are um, the verb to be. And, of course, there have a car accident. I, because in Chinese, it's yo yi ge. Yo yi ge. Yeah, this, this is my personal favorite. Teacher made me smoke cigarettes. In Chinese, let and make are the same word. So, for example, 每天练习, every day exercise, let me lose weight. And, of course, the opposite is also true. 吃太多了, eating too much, let me get fat. My other personal favorite is, mother, let me do homework. Oh, that's so nice of her. She let you do your homework like you were dying to do it. And she finally let you. You wore her down. I decided to compile a list of common Chinglish expressions, so what I did was I left a Word document open on my desktop computer, and then as I was marking my students' papers, when I found uh, what I believed to be Chinglish, I'd call them to the board, I'd uh, call them to the front of the room, and I'd say, hey, what, you know, what exactly did you intend to write here? What was your Chinese meaning when you wrote this in English? And then they would tell me, and then I would have them type it into the computer. So I've compiled quite a list of these, these very common Chinglish uh, mistakes. Uh, there is a Chinglish worksheet that I made that's floating around the Internet somewhere. It's absolutely free, uh, and, and you're welcome to use it. And if not, I will post some Chinglish exercises right here, and you can do them at your leisure. Students need to understand the culture of the English language in order to achieve fluency. To teach successfully, foreign teachers need to be aware of cultural linguistic differences between Chinese and English, which you all seem to be. And most of these problems would disappear if you could get your students to watch 2,500 hours of American TV. Only American, though, right? It must be American. But that's the subject of my next presentation. So if you come to Cambodia for Camp Pisa, you'll hear me talking about watching 2,500 hours of TV. Keep studying and keep teaching. I'm Antonio Brissetto. Thank you. <laughs>